before we drop this in the hole, let's talk about some components of things that's been going on. Let's talk about the top frame. So the top frame, um, I felt with the long links that are involved, I needed to be able to adjust this and to be able to lock it down after we get it in the hole, figure out the best squareness we can in the hole, and then we're gonna need to lock this in place. So I don't wanna weld it down, uh, I need it adjustable. So I created a bracket that's welded to this wheel foot. So in order to make this as flush as I could, I took and I welded a stud to the inside of this top frame that way I could put a nut on it and lock this together. So I'll show you what it looks like together and then we'll take it apart and you can see what I did. So there's a nut right there that goes to this slotted bracket. This is what the welded on feet brackets look like. Um, I cut this horseshoe shape in here so that I could keep it flush with the wheel. That way the height would still match the roller side. Um, I did something similar with the feet. It's got a horseshoe. Um, this top one, I slotted it and uh, that's been working pretty good. So I welded these bolt heads on here, these two places. I also drilled a hole in the back and bung welded it in. So those bolts should be in there pretty good. That way I won't have to have a wrench to back it and this side of the frame can stay flat for the floor. So this is what the bottom rail set looks like. Uh, I did the same thing as I did with the top rail. I welded in some bungs. And I've been in here trying to level these suckers up. I've had to do it in a couple of layers at a time. And I may have to do one more layer. I'm not quite sure. In order to level these, I've been trying this with a mortar mix, thinking that, you know, it should have a really good compression ratio, like a brick house with all the weight of the bricks. Uh, and it's going to be a similar layer of about three quarters of an inch at this end. It's super ugly and I didn't film it because it was a big struggle mess once again. So I'm going to drop the lift in here and hopefully the mortar doesn't crack. Then if that's all good to go, then I'll go ahead and paint these up. I did paint the bottom side with primer already. Anyway, I've just been chipping away at this every little bit I get after work on the weekends. Lots of little bitty things, but not really anything to show a whole video. All right, shall we commence with the ridiculousness? Let's get it on. All right, let's take a look at this mess before we go any further. Uh, I gotta have plenty of length on my hydraulic hoses. I wanna leave those all bled out and contained because that would be a big mess down in there to bleed them again. Uh, we've got our boom that we made for lowering the walls that we've seen before. A couple of straps mounted up high. Then we've got four additional straps coming down, a strap up here so that I can control the angularity from the tractor with my tilt. Um, and I've got a strap here to keep the frame from opening up wider than what we want. Our boom has about six and a half feet of clearance here. So as it goes down in the hole, it should let it continue going with the tilt function all the way down.
All right, so uh, there's our first look of what it looks like down the hole. Had to be careful getting my pump down here. Uh, got the hoses free of getting crimped. I'm gonna get some clamps to hold those permanently. I gotta move this ladder and then we'll drop our rack down in there and then we can uh, hook it back up. I got my batteries hooked back up. Uh, got my hydraulics routed over here in this utility path. Uh, my battery cables go back behind here uh, where we got that retaining wall. That created a space for wires. Got remote, my remote hung back there. It's kind of cool because it's got magnets and I have plenty of magnetic place to put it. I'm gonna have to probably come back in here and readjust this, but there's my feet nuts right there and there. So after we get that top rail on, get it kind of fitted in the hole, then we'll have to see how it travels down, if it gets squirrely, if it starts rubbing this wall, that wall. So there's gonna be a lot of adjustment at that point, but uh, I'm ready to pull this ladder out of here. Probably won't be the last time, honestly, especially with this uh, having to come down here and figure out our weight lifting issue. I'm ready to watch this thing do some work in here. Big moment. Yeah, so that's where we are. Okay, well that's all the way up, and uh, the good news is the feet can make it to flush. Let's say we throw this frame on here and see how that looks. Okay, uh, we got our nut there, slightly cinched down. We got enough clearance to do a run or so, but uh, it's looking good so far. Let's put a few floor plates on here and let's uh, see how this thing looks. I've got this thing adjusted. Let's uh, see how it works. working pretty good and I mean if I have to change the oil now it'll be super easy working on cars I can use a seat or a stool at this height no problem but we want it to go the rest of the way down uh, but currently with these floor plates and the frame and myself uh, I put a mark here this is the height where this starts to pick up strength we're about 22 inches off the ground so in order to get this weight to go the rest of the way down, we're going to have to come up with some spring supports. So let me show you what I've come up with so far. All right, so this is what I've come up with so far. Uh, my buddy Rob just got his springs changed on his Pontiac G8. And I just got through doing my brakes and rotors on my GMC Terrain. This lift is now going to be part Terrain, part Pontiac G8, part everything else custom just so happens that these springs fit right in my rotors so I'm gonna cut off all this excess weight 
and I'll find a way to mount these into the frame. If this is made to hold four corners of a 4,000 pound car, then each one of these springs is going to have around a thousand pounds of compression. So I may need just one. Uh, let me know what you guys think. Um, I could start with one and then uh, if that doesn't work, I can add the other one in. I do have a dual acting hydraulic pump, so it will be able to compress these down even more. And that way it can create even more potential energy stored up to help this lift back up. So let me know in the comments what you think about this solution and what do you think about the lift? Uh, it's looking pretty good uh, for an amateur. I'm gonna sign off this video and when we return, we'll be solving the helper lift spring issue. Catch you on the next video, YouTube.